Our journey into the history of the Plymouth A-Block engine starts in 1954. Looking ahead at the 1956 model year, Plymouth designed a new engine family unlike any other that they named the A-Block. It used polyspherical combustion chambers with diagonal canted valves and a light, strong block and rotating assembly, far different than the Hemi used by Dodge, DeSoto, Chrysler, and Imperial, and the Hemi block Polly had used by Chrysler and Dodge. In July 1955, the first A277 rolled out of the Qualimatic Mound Road engine plant in Detroit, Michigan, and the first A303 at the Windsor plant in Ontario. The plants were revolutionary in changing the industry and produced all the A blocks from 1956 through 1967, including the 277, 301, 303, 313, 318, and 326. I intend on producing another video about the factories, so please subscribe. You might ask what a polyspherical engine even is. The term refers to the combustion chamber and valve design. In 1951, Chrysler Corporation introduced a hemispherical combustion chamber head with intake and exhaust valves opposite each other with two rocker arm assemblies per head. Due to the head's complexity, it was both expensive to produce and to maintain. To provide consumers with a cheaper alternative, Chrysler and Dodge released a new head design in 1955 that bolted to the Hemi short blocks, whose intake and exhaust valves were diagonal each other, canted, positioned in a stepped well, and used one rocker arm assembly per head. The design team called it a polyspherical chamber. Hot rodders and mechanics began calling the Chrysler and Dodge poly engines semi-hemis because they still used the Hemi short block. The A block is not a semi-hemi, since it does not use any hemi components. The wedge engine appeared in 1958 when Chrysler Corporation aligned itself more with GM and Ford by introducing the B block engine, whose intake and exhaust valves are in line in a wedge-shaped chamber with a single rocker arm assembly per head. Now let's get into the A block history. Plymouth introduced the A277 with 3.75 inch bore and 3.125 inch stroke for 1956 domestic models. The 1956 Fury came standard with a hopped up A303 made by overboring the 277 to 3.81 inch. It had nine and a quarter compression, hot camshaft and valve springs, dual points performance distributor, single four barrel carburetor, and dual high-flow exhaust. Domestic Chrysler and Dodge did not offer the A-Block in 1956, and DeSoto and Imperial never offered it any year. The export markets for Canada, Australia, and Britain offered the A277 in lower model Plymouths, the A303 in mid and high model Plymouths, and the A303 in the Chrysler, Windsor, and Dodge Custom Royal. Performance was a key element for the design team, and under the supervision of engineer Bob Cahill, Plymouth entered a modified 1956 Fury driven by Phil Walters in the 1956 NASCAR speed run at Daytona Beach. The car's A303 was modified with higher compression, a hotter cam, and a dual four-barrel intake manifold modified from a Chrysler 300 Hemi with custom adapters to attach it to the A-Block. The engine set new speed records for its displacement class at 82.54 miles per hour average standing mile and 124.01 miles per hour average flying mile. It ran an all out 143.596 miles per hour. From what I know of the engine design timeline, my educated guess is that they modified the Hemi dual quad intake manifold because the A-block dual quad intake manifold was not yet designed in early 1956. 1957 brought many changes. Plymouth was still the only division offering the A-block domestically and began phasing out the 277 and 303. They revised the block and crankshaft for a 3.91 inch bore and 3.31 inch stroke to make the A318 
that came standard in Furies and optional in all domestic models. Belvedere's, Savoy's, and Suburban's offered an oddball A301 built with a 318 block and 277 crank. Export 118-inch wheelbase Plymouth and Plymouth body Dodges, also known as Plodge, used the A303 as the standard V8, and other models offered a new A313 that used an underboard 318 block of 3.875 inch bore. Canadian Dodge and Fargo trucks received their first A303, while Export Chrysler stopped offering the A block. In 1957, Plymouth began calling the domestic engine packages Fury V800. The dual Fury V800 was the only true factory high performance A block ever produced and was standard in 1957 and 1958 Furies. It boasted dual four barrel carbs, a hotter cam, nine and a quarter to one compression, high flow dual exhaust, dual points, performance distributor, and resistor spark plugs. It put out 290 horsepower at 5200 RPM and 330 foot pounds of torque at 3600 RPM. The Fury V800 Super Pack was an optional engine for all 1957 and 1958 Plymouth models except in the Fury and had a single four barrel carb, 9 to 1 compression, hotter cam, high flow dual exhaust, and single point performance distributor. It put out 250 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 340 foot pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. The Fury V800 was the standard engine for all 1957 and 1958 models except for, but optional in, the Fury, and became the A-Block workhorse through 1967. It came with a single two-barrel carb, 9-to-1 compression, and put out 225 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 330 foot-pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. In 1957, Plymouth advertised the A318 as a performance engine, but also as a commuter engine focused on fuel economy after its first place finish in the 1957 Mobile Gas Economy Run. Lead driver Mary Davis and relief driver and navigator Ginny Sims won their class in an A301 Belvedere at 21.3 miles per gallon averaged over the four-day 1,568-mile road course from Los Angeles, California to Sun Valley, Idaho. In 1958, the A277, A301, and A303 were discontinued in place of the A318 as the standard domestic engine and the A313 in export Plymouths and Dodge Mayfair, Regent, Crusader, and Suburban models. Canada Dodge and Fargo trucks offered the A313. Export Chrysler and domestic Chrysler and Dodge did not offer the A-Block. In 1959, Plymouth continued using the A318 in domestic cars. Performance increased very slightly, although the dual Fury V800 was discontinued. After reading over internal memos and public advertisements, one explanation I can see for Plymouth moving away from the A318 as a factory performance engine is the release of the B-Block 361 Golden Commando with 395 horsepower in the 1959 Plymouth Fury that was marketed heavily as the premier performance engine. While in 1959 Chrysler still did not offer the A318 domestically, Dodge began offering the A318 in domestic trucks advertised as the Power Giant 318 Heavy Duty. Dodge also overboard the 318 to 3.95 inch to make a 325 as the standard V8 for domestic coronets, advertised as a Red Ram 326 to differentiate it from the 325 Hemi and Hemi Block Poly engines. The engine produced 255 horsepower at 4400 RPM and 350 foot-pounds of torque at 2800 RPM. It included hydraulic flat tappet camshaft and lifters, whereas the A318 and A313 used mechanical lifters. The A313 continued in export Plymouth and Dodge models. 
Export Dodge and Fargo Trucks offer the A313 called a Power Dome Polyspherical Combustion Chamber. A 1959 Canadian brochure is the first time that I have seen the term polyspherical used in advertisements, although the design team used the term in 1956 internal memos. Export Chrysler did not offer the A Block. Starting in 1959, Chrysler's Industrial Engine Division introduced the 190 horsepower A318H series, which included the H318, HC318, HB318, and HT318 that referred to different internal components and were available through 1967. Chrysler's Marine Engine Division also introduced the A318M series with the 177 horsepower Chrysler CV. I intend on creating another video dedicated to the industrial and marine engine A blocks. For 1960, Chrysler Corporation simplified their engine options and made the A318 the standard small V8 engine for many Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler domestic cars and trucks, and the A313 for many export Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler models. The Marine Division introduced the 190 horsepower Chrysler M318A. In 1961, Dodge began offering the semi-premium A318 package in domestic light trucks and industrial engines, sometimes denoted by a dash 2 or superscript 2 stamped on the left front of the block, but usually not marked. They began using the full premium package A318 as the standard engine in heavy trucks including D400, D500, D600, W300, and W500, also sometimes denoted by a dash 3 or superscript 3 stamped on the left front of the block, but usually not marked. I go into detail about the different packages in the specifications page of the website. Dodge began collaborating with Frank Industries to sell Dodge Frank motorhomes with an A318 in a modified heavy Dodge chassis. In 1962, the domestic A318 and export A313 saw major changes to the block and other components that would last through 1967 and in many ways continue into the LA and Magnum engines. Of particular importance for those interested in running an A block, 1962 engines received the Torque Flight A727 transmission or standard bell housing with a new bolt and alignment pattern and a shorter six bolt crankshaft flange. By comparison, the 1956 through 1961 engines used the same bell housing bolt pattern, alignment, spacer plate, and eight bolt crankshaft flange pattern and length as the Hemis and Hemi block polys to mate to the Power Flight and Torque Flight A466 iron transmissions and early standard bell housings. The 1956 through 1961 engines will not accept an aluminum torque flight or 1962 onward standard bell housing without an aftermarket adapter. The 1962 through 1967 engines will not accept a power flight, torque flight A466, or early standard bell housing, and unfortunately an aftermarket adapter is not produced. The redesigned 1962 A-block bell housing bolt pattern alignment and crankshaft will go on to be used by the LA and Magnum. Chrysler Corporation engineers will also use many of the internal and external components of the 1962 redesigned A-block for the LA engine family. Note that the design changes I cover here are not the only ones, which the parts interchange section on the website covers in depth. 1962 was the last year for the four-barrel A318 and A313 in vehicles, although it was offered in the Marine A318 through 1967. The Marine Division began phasing out the Chrysler CV A318 and discontinued the Chrysler M318A. Instead, they introduced the Fury M series that would run through 1967, including the 190 horsepower M318A, 195 horsepower M318B and 210 horsepower M318C. In 1963, the domestic two-barrel A318 and export A313 continued as a standard V8 in many Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler vehicles. 
Sometime around 1963, the Marine Engine Division discontinued the Fury 190 and added the Fury 235 horsepower M318D, although I haven't been able to find factory documentation of when this change happened in 1963. Of importance in the A-Blocks saga, in 1964, Chrysler Corporation introduced the first Light A, or LA, 273 engine under the design leadership of Bill Workman, who coincidentally was the first junior resident engineer at Plymouth's Qualimatic Mound Road engine plant, who in 1955 watched the first A277 roll off the assembly line. Documents written by the A-Block design team and interviews with Workman do not credit him with having a significant role in the A-Block's development, but, ironically, the LA he helped design would eventually kill the A-Block that helped start his career. In 1965, the A313 was discontinued in export cars and trucks and replaced by the A318. Traveler's Company, better known as Travco, took over motorhome production but continued offering the A318. With the popularity of the LA273, plans to release the LA318 and LA340 in 1967, and a desire to simplify engine production, Chrysler Corporation chose 1966 as the last year the A318 was offered in Plymouth, Dodge, and Chrysler domestic cars and trucks. Travco Motorhomes continued offering the A318 and the industrial and marine divisions continued their A318 models. 1967 was the end of the road for the A block in all markets. A318 stock was used up in export cars and trucks with most of them sold in Canada. Travco Motorhomes offered the A318 for the last time. The industrial and marine divisions continued selling the A318 but transitioned advertising in favor of the new LA318. Now that we have a handle on a summary of the A-Block's history, I want to address common garage myths and misconceptions about the A-Block that have survived through the years regardless of the facts. Semi-Hemi is not even semi-true. Yes, to the disappointment of anyone with an A-Block wanting to ride the coattails of the famed early Hemi when describing their engine, an A-Block is not remotely a semi-Hemi. As I mentioned when discussing the term polyspherical, the semi-hemi moniker came about in the 1950s among hot rodders and mechanics to refer to the Chrysler and Dodge polyhead that bolted onto the hemi short block. The moniker has nothing to do with the shape of the polyspherical combustion chamber or canted valves, but with the fact that the Chrysler and Dodge poly engines are part hemi in the short block. Completely opposite, the 1956 through 1967 A block does not use hemi components. Another myth is that A-blocks are cheap engines. The misconception is that Plymouth designed the A-block engine as a cheap alternative to Chrysler, DeSoto, Dodge, and Imperial Hemi and Hemi block poly V8s, but this assertion is not supported by historical documentation written by the Plymouth executives and the very people who designed the A-block, production processes, and engine plant. Rather than wanting a cheap engine, Plymouth threw money at the engine to push engine design and manufacturing into a new technological era, largely because they reached the Hemi's design limits. Between 1954 and 1955, Plymouth spent a staggering $50 million on the A-block development and Qualimatic engine plant, the equivalent of $568 million as of 2023, and the most money ever spent on designing and producing an automotive engine at the time. The metallurgy, casting, forging, machining, and assembly processes were superior to the Hemi and GM and Ford engines, and all A blocks include thick block and head castings with little to no core shift, forged crankshaft, forged connecting rods, and full floating pistons. The cheap myth, in the same way as the semi Hemi myth, confuses the A block with the Hemi block poly engines that Chrysler and Dodge developed in fact as a cheaper production and servicing alternative to the Hemi. Another myth is that A-blocks are not performance engines but are only good for economy. The A-block from its conception was designed with both racing and economy in mind. As I explained earlier, the new 1956 A303 broke two world records in speed before its paint was even cured. 
That same year, Plymouth released a rare factory aluminum dual quad intake manifold available through dealerships. The 1956 through 1958 Plymouth Fury came factory with a performance package, and other models offered the four barrel Super Pack performance package. Up against its contemporaries in Chevrolet's 265 and 283, Pontiac's 317 and 347, Oldsmobile's 324, Buick's 322, and Ford's 292 and 312, the Fury A303 and A318 were forces to be reckoned with at racetracks and time trials. In 1959, Chrysler Corporation stopped funding the Small Block Performance Program to focus those efforts on the B Block and RB Block for stock car and drag racing until they began funding the Small Block Program again in the mid-1960s with the LA273 Super Commando, followed quickly by the LA340 to compete with GM and Ford Small Blocks. Chrysler's abandonment of their small block performance program in 1959 is a significant reason the factory and aftermarket industries developed very few performance parts for the A318, but instead developed a plethora of parts for the B and RB. The A block can in fact produce significant power, particularly because of the advantageous combustion chamber, valve design, and strong short block as evidenced by the many 390, 402, 408, and even 426 stroker builds putting out between 400 and 600 horsepower and even more torque and able to twist well into the 7,000 RPM range. Garage legend has it that the industrial and truck A blocks are the strongest, thickest castings. In fact, all industrial and truck engines, including the full premium package, Use the exact same block, cylinder heads, connecting rods, crankshaft, and many other components as the base model two-barrel car engine. Most of the difference in the industrial HB318 and HT318 and heavy truck full premium packages is in the type of valves and spring retainers, main and rod bearing material, timing set, and a shop peened forged crank. There is no practical benefit in seeking out and paying more for an industrial or heavy truck full premium engine for a performance build, since the internal components that make the full premium line special in its day are now inferior to modern parts that would go into a high performance build. You have likely heard the poly A block referred to as a wide block and claims that it is larger than an LA, B, and RB engine. The A block is actually no wider than an LA engine and nowhere near as wide as a B or RB. The A and LA engine blocks are nearly identical to where most people would not tell them apart side by side. The difference is in the width of the cylinder heads and valve cover placement, which creates somewhat of an optical illusion. I have measured a 1966 A318 and 1968 LA318 with factory valve covers side by side and the A318 valve covers at the widest protrude 1 and 7 8 inches horizontally more on each side than the LA valve covers. But there is more to explain about this measurement. Both the A318 and LA318 are the exact same width overall at the widest point of 24 and a half inches from outside exhaust manifold to outside exhaust manifold. The A318 valve covers extend horizontally out plumb with the exhaust manifolds when dropping a plumb bob, whereas the LA stop about plumb with the exhaust gasket flange on the heads, where the exhaust manifolds stick out past the valve covers. This visual difference when standing in front of the engines and not seeing the exhaust manifolds on the A block, but seeing them on the LA, gives the A block an optical illusion of being wider than the LA, even though it is not. As for the B and RB, they are two inches wider than the A block. Another misconception is that the A block is a boat anchor and as heavy as a 440. Chrysler Corporation's marketing team did a great job advertising the Light A 273 as the lightest Chrysler V8 ever made at the time, to where a myth developed that the A block is heavier than an RB. What Chrysler neglected to publicize was what some sleuths, myself included, have confirmed by actually weighing parts. All in all, a factory A318 is between about 31 and 60 pounds heavier than a factory LA318 depending on the intake manifold, timing cover, water pump, and accessories used. 
The heaviest A block is the 1957 and 1958 Dual Fury V800 with iron dual quad intake, cast iron timing chain cover, and cast iron water pump, which I own and weighed. The dry engine loaded from oil pan to carburetors, crank pulley to rear crank flange, but not including accessories, weighs 561 pounds. That is about the same as an LA360 and about 100 pounds lighter than a 440. Swap out the intake manifold, timing cover, and water pump for aluminum, and the engine weighs close to the same as an LA318. While overshadowed by other engine families, the A-Block lives on today in tens if not hundreds of thousands of surviving classic cars, trucks, motorhomes, boats, and industrial equipment. Whether stock or bored and stroked to a high-performance screamer, the engine has a proud following. The A-Block and the Qualimatic Mound Road and Windsor engine plants revolutionized engine design and manufacturing and had an exceptional run from 1956 through 1967 that produced hundreds of thousands of engines. The design was so successful that many of the short block features, parts, and accessories were used in the LA and some survived into the 21st century in Magnum 5.2 and 5.9 engines. The assembly plant practices, such as automation and engine dynos, changed automotive manufacturing forever. I hope you've enjoyed this historical summary and myth busting of a unique engine. For those interested, I have many more details about the engine, engine plants, and mechanical technical articles in other videos and on my website, poly318.com. If you haven't already, please like, subscribe, and share away.